Hello, hello, I'm Albert Siegel, and today I'm going to take a look at the high ISO performance of the new Pentax K3 Mark III. Now, before I get started, I just want to let you know that I am not a brand ambassador. I am not compensated by or affiliated with Ricoh in any way. I'm just a humble journalist that likes to make YouTube videos for hobby. I also live in Tokyo and happen to know some people at Rico who let me borrow one of the new K3 cameras at my request and let me share my thoughts with you, whatever they may be. So enough of that, let's get down to why you're here. Now, I am familiar with the preferred method of judging image quality by many commenters online. However, as most people don't use a screen larger than 27 inches or print beyond A3, I'll just use that as a maximum size for judging what I think looks good. So I decided to test both the high ISO and autofocus tracking at the same time. The light outside was less than ideal, but the camera did an outstanding job of tracking oncoming cars. I can't say how it compares to every other camera out there, but I can say that I was impressed with the very high keep rate I was getting, especially compared to my old camera. But cars might not be the most challenging subject, so I tried it with my kids. Now just keeping them in frame was hard, but again, the camera impressed me with the ability to keep them in focus. Getting back to high ISO, here are some shots around my neighborhood. Starting with 3200, this just looks clean. In my opinion, it's nearly as good as low ISO shots when printed at A3 or viewed full screen on a 27 inch monitor. Here's another shot at 3200. It's just beautifully clean and clear. Again, I can't really see a major difference from low ISO, so let's see how it looks at higher ISO settings. At 6400, you can start to see some loss of detail, but it still looks pretty darn good. At 12,800, more loss of detail, still looks good, but from here and higher, you might prefer a smaller print size if you're not a fan of the look that high ISO brings. Personally, I find the high ISO usable for small prints up to 204,800. ISO 819,200, on the other hand, is unusable at any size larger than a postage stamp, and ISO 1,600,000 results in an unrecognizable mess of static that resembles what a TV without reception looked like back when they had rabbit ear antennas. As for video, I'll start off with 4K at ISO 6400. Looks totally usable to me, and no real complaints. Um, it's hard. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nom, 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 Oh, thank you. That being said, I find 12,800 to be the highest usable setting with 25,600 to be acceptable if no other choice. Anything above that is just not worth bothering with. Now, I think I've shown the high ISO performance is pretty darn good, but is it 135 full frame good? Let's take a look at how it compares against the highly regarded Sony a7 III. Since these cameras are close enough in the megapixel count and I'm shooting at a 35mm equivalent on both, hopefully the images will compare nicely. I shot the Sony with the 16-35 f4 Zeiss branded lens and the Pentax with the 16-50 f2.8 DA star lens. Both lenses were stopped down to f8 to try to keep exposure settings more or less the same. Now looking at ISO 100 through 1600, there really is no visible difference at all between both cameras, so I'll skip all that and just go directly to higher ISOs like 6400. Still looking good, so let's go higher. Now here's where it gets interesting. The smaller APS-C sensor on the Pentax is actually slightly cleaner than the full frame Sony. This is just throwing everything I thought I knew about sensor size performance out the window. Going to the maximum ISO of the Sony at 204,800, they are both pretty much the same. Not really usable as is for this shot, but one is not worse than the other, though the K3 did handle the color better. Now, even though the Pentax can go higher, there really is no point from here. Still, I'm beyond stunned that the APS-C sensor in the new K3 Mark III can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the full-frame sensor and actually is better than some older generation full-frame sensors. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be so kind as to leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Many thanks, and have an awesome day.